A lot of people don't understand the way we see things, but we see things on a daily basis. Uh, you'll find an Iraqi in Africa, you'll find an Iraqi in South America, you'll find an Iraqi in Australia and New Zealand. I have cousins that are in Australia and New Zealand. Um, that's where we are today. We can't go back. Now, I, haven't, I haven't gone back to Iraq since 2003. I'm not able to go back to Iraq uh, because uh, I'm Sunni and uh, I'm from Mosul uh, originally. <laughs> I'll probably be uh, kidnapped at the airport as soon as I arrive. Um, and then tortured and, and killed at the end. So policies that were put in place were, were, were wrong. They were misguided. They may have not been misguided, they may have been purposely put in, but they've ended in complete disarray and complete uh, wipeout of any social fabric that's left in Iraq. You remember back in 2003, we didn't have electricity. Well, today we don't have electricity. And billions have been spent. There were sanctions. There were, th there were, there were rules, regulations, all sorts of things that were crippling, intentionally crippling the system so it doesn't advance, so it doesn't get upgraded. Well, what's there, what's holding it today? Corruption, Iran, the stooges that the Americans have put in place, and the, 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 the ones that they continue to work with. The ones that they continue to work with, that's the problem. There was con constant lies of, you know, the, 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 the portrayal that, that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction, that Iraq posed a threat to its neighbors, that Iraq, uh, killed the, the Kurds, or just to make this uh, uh, as, you know, as brief as possible. We had an eight year long war uh, trying to defend our borders, even though the West portrayed it as an act of aggression from Iraq to uh, Iran, it was actually the opposite. It was clear then that the, the Americans had a plan to um, uh, weaken both countries uh, as much as they can, so the Iraq and Iran. So the they were pumping information to one, pumping weapons to the other, and having them go through a proxy war so they can they can just uh, enter both countries. Uh, I think it was by May of 1991 we had finalized all uh, you know destruction of all uh, uh, chemical and biological and uh, whatever remnants of, of uh, any nuclear plant we had uh, back then, and the hope was that. Uh, we will go back to rebuilding the country. Okay. And Iraq, during all these years, kept saying we had nothing. You know, he, they kept coming out. And I remember Blair coming out saying, well, Saddam lied. No, you lied. You, the, the tipping point, I believe, the tipping point uh, that uh, changed everything into, uh, uh, from a sanctions regime to a, uh, an all-out war was when Iraq, or Saddam himself, declared that he wanted to sell oil uh, in euros. So when Bremer came in, he, uh, he basically dismantled the, the intelligence, the police, the, uh, the security forces, uh, and the, the army. So disbanding all of these based on the debatification uh, process, that was an actually uh, a suicidal move and uh, the repercussions as you can see to today. Everyone that has, was working within these agencies and has become, uh, uh, you know, has been crossed out, is now working against. Now some of these people have gone into mafias, so they're using their, their intelligence or their killing skills or their whatever uh, uh, skills uh, uh, for, the, for the mafia and for the warlords that each one now has and controls within the country. Uh, others went into, uh, uh, you know, organizations like ISIS and uh, Al Qaeda and Zarqawi and all that. Uh, and others formed their own militias. That was that was a death sentence that that uh, Bremer signed. It was basically a death sentence for Iraq because that's going to be in complete chaos. But it's also the end for for American control in the area. You know, the Americans come back and say, well, you've got democracy, you can, you can vote in, vote out. That's absolute nonsense. Uh, the, the, the elections are, are all rigged. Ayad Alawi, when he won, I think it was about uh, seven, eight years ago, when, when he won the elections, uh, America stood by 
uh, Iran didn't accept him and uh, forced Alawi to step down and uh, for Al Maliki to continue. That was that, that was just absolutely nuts. That's why people have just lost any faith. Jamal Jamal Ibrahim Jamal Jafar Ibrahim Al Ibrahimi. This guy, when Iraq Iraq's government was toppled, he came in and he became a parliamentarian, a lawmaker in Iraq. He's Iranian, he's a terrorist, and he became a lawmaker in Iraq under the noses of Bremer and the US forces. You have others that come out and openly, openly support sectarian killing. Parliamentarians, lawmakers, that openly support sectarian killing. How can you have a system that runs so corruptly and no one cares anything about? We are as bad, if not worse, than the Mugabe regime. How does that make any sense? It's the most corrupt country on earth today. No, when Obama came, and he was even worse. Eight years of Obama was complete destruction. These, these are the lies. The lies that America has portrayed. Iraq has, has changed its democracy now, and they're, you know, they're, they're having all sorts of problems internally. But that's something internal. Well, you've caused this problem. You've caused this, this rip in the fabric, the social fabric of the, of the country. You brought in people and you've supported illegitimate people that, that have come in and have taken over. And these were enemies of the state of Iraq back in the 1980s and 90s. And they're now running the country. Today, Iraq is broke. Uh, the prime minister uh, was also part of the Dawa party. And so he's, he's part of the, the problem uh, to begin with. Uh, but Maliki before that and, uh, and now. Um, uh, are declaring that there's no money left. They're borrowing from the IMF, from the World Bank. Uh, they don't have uh, money to pay uh, the, the salaries. Uh, soldiers have gone six months, ten months without salaries because there's just not enough money. You want to use, you want to, you know, you justify, you know, uh, use uh, uh, double standards and you justify the war at, at one stage because it fits your, your, uh, agenda, but now it doesn't really matter, so you really don't care and you want to take it off the, the, uh, the, the airway so that people don't, don't think about it and don't bother with it. That's a different thing. But, so these are the lies. And where are we now? 